Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm CE Tech Dude. Today we're going to be looking at the LG G8 in mid-2020 to see if it's still worth your hard-earned money. And the answer is yes, and here's why. So let's start with the main reason, and that's the value. This phone came refurbished from Amazon for $200. And $200 for a phone just over a year old that has last year's flagship specs is just awesome. It packs a Snapdragon 855 processor with 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage with micro SD card support, headphone jack, an OLED screen, 6.1 inch, a rear fingerprint sensor, yes, and some really good cameras to close it all out. LG also claims this phone will get upgraded to Android 11, and it has already been upgraded to Android 10, so hopefully they'll stick with that promise, although LG doesn't always give the most timely updates. Performance on this phone still rocks. The Snapdragon 855 processor is no slouch. Uh, gaming, media, and everything else you can throw this phone has no issues. And with that PLED screen, everything looks amazing too. It can go up to 1440p resolution, although out of the box it is set to 1080p, so you want to change that to 1440p straight off the bat. It doesn't really affect battery life uh, that I've found, so that's pretty cool. Colors really pop on this phone, and it gets plenty bright for outdoor use and plenty dim for nighttime use. And with the OLED screen also comes a feature that I've become so accustomed to that when a phone doesn't have it, it really upsets me, and that's the always-on display. And I really like the implementation here from LG. When it's on the always on screen, you can uh, swipe left to get to some quick toggles like flashlight, which uh, is pretty awesome. And just some other things, you can turn the phone on silent or ring or vibrate uh, from this as well. So that's pretty useful. You can also swipe again to get to some media controls when you're playing music, so that's pretty cool too. And with Android 10 also comes a pretty sweet dark theme, which you can enable in settings. When you do that, it sets the system UI to dark, uh, which when you have an OLED screen, makes everything look a lot better in my opinion. And it saves some battery life as well, which is pretty sweet. The LG skin is, it's okay. Um, it's got Google now to the left, which is pretty awesome, but it does, in my opinion, lag a little bit, especially when you're trying to multitask, if you're trying to go back home real fast or uh, switch between apps, it has a little bit of lag. And one thing that's pretty annoying is if you install a new app, it puts it at the end of the app drawer, even if you tell it to sort by uh, name, which is kind of annoying. Uh, if you, and so now if I install a new app, no matter what the name is, it'll put it at the end, which is pretty dumb, but something LG can fix in the next uh, update, hopefully. You can also implement gesture control. Uh, this is just like the gesture control from the iPhones. If you swipe up and hold it, it'll uh, bring up the, the apps you had recently. You can also switch apps by swiping on the taskbar, which is pretty good. And to go back when you're in an app, you just uh, hit the back, swipe to the left or right, and it goes back. So that's pretty cool. And this phone also has some air motion gestures, which you'll probably never use. I'm never gonna use it, but it is there. So you can do some fancy hand control, do the built-in uh, sensors on the notch, um, similar to the Pixel 4. Although it seems a little inconvenient and from other reviews I've seen, it's not really worth your time to even try to do it. So I'll leave those off and I would assume you will too, because unless you just want to show it off, it, it'd be something neat to see if like a party trick, but besides that, not too useful. Now, hopefully in the next update, which LG, LG said it's gonna update to their Velvet UI from their Velvet phone. Um, I haven't used that phone personally, but I think it's supposed to be pretty cool. Hopefully it'll fix some of the complaints about the gesture, but you can always install a third party launcher like Nova and fix it yourself. And from there you can bring back whatever you want to. So I prefer Nova, uh, but it's up to you. You can do whatever you want to. Now, as far as sound goes, um, it's pretty good on this phone. So it does have a speaker here uh, at the bottom, just one speaker. And then the whole display has a speaker underneath it. So I'll show you an example of what the sound sounds like. So the sound's pretty decent. Um, it's definitely better coming from the bottom, but it does have the whole screen under sound setting, which is interesting. Um, it doesn't have an earpiece, which is also interesting, but sound's not bad. Definitely won't fill a room, but it will be fine for notifications and other things. But the good thing about this phone is you don't have to use the speakers at all because it has a headphone jack. So yay LG for keeping that. It's one of the only manufacturers that keeps headphone jacks and I'm glad they do because if you have a nice pair of wired headphones, especially with LG, um, it'll sound great because it has that hi-fi deck, the quad deck in here. So if you have a nice pair of headphones, go ahead and use the headphone jack because it's worth it. 
And as far as other features, the vibration motor, it's pretty weak, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so definitely keep the sound on if you're worried about missing the notifications or wear a cheap smartwatch. Like uh, here I've got the Amazfit Bit, it's like $50 and it does notifications. So just be mindful of that, the vibration motor isn't the best. Now the cameras on this phone are pretty good. So the main shooter um, does great in both night and daytime modes. And it has a dedicated nighttime mode, which is good. And you can record video up to 4K 60 frames per second, so that's pretty sweet. And the ultra wide sensor over here, um, it does a great job in good lighting. In low light, it struggles a little bit. But overall, I would say these cameras are pretty awesome, especially if you get this phone for less than $250. Um, no other budget phone will be able to touch those cameras. And with the micro SD card slot, you can shoot tons of videos and tons of photos. So uh, overall, great camera system in my opinion. And now on to my major complaint about this phone, and that is how slippery this is. So it's a beautiful phone, all glass and everything, and it has wireless charging underneath, which is awesome. But I've had several occasions where I'll sit this phone on my desk or on my wireless charger, and apparently those things are not leveled because when I come back, this phone will be on the floor. Um, so as you can see, it's very slippery. Uh, I'd recommend getting a case or a screen protector. I've got a case here, it's like, $10 on Amazon and it does a great job giving it some more grip, but it's up to you. Um, I think you will find you need a case though or a skin because this phone will slip. Uh, just warning you guys. That's my main complaint about it though. Um, as far as battery life goes, this phone has a 3500 milliamp hour battery and in my opinion, it gets pretty decent battery life. It makes it through the day with a three hour screen on time. It's not a champ or anything of uh, the small, smallish battery, the same size battery as the S10e. But overall, I think it's a pretty good sized battery for what it is, even with the always on display, uh, make it through the day just fine. So that's pretty sweet. But it does have, like I said, wireless charging underneath here, and it does have quick charge 3.0. So even if you run out of juice, there's plenty of options to get more juice. So not too bad, LG. So in my opinion, um, to come back to, is this phone worth it in 2020? Yes, it is very worth it. I don't think you'll find a phone cheaper, especially if you can get this phone for $250 or less that has just as this many features on this phone. Uh, beautiful screen, great cameras, good battery life. No other budget phone is gonna come close to touch your performance on this phone with that Snapdragon 855. So if you can get this phone for cheap, uh, definitely do. And hopefully LG will follow through on their software updates. Like I said, I can't guarantee that, but hopefully they do. But yeah, this is a still for the price, guys, in my opinion. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this review is useful to you. If it was, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also in the comments, let me know if you have this phone and what you think. And also if you have any opinions on what phone I should look at next in 2020, let me know down there. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this LG G8 uh, look in 2020. If you did, make sure you, like I said earlier, leave a like and let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. You just got CE Tech. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace out. See ya. Hey everybody and welcome back. This video is a review but it's also a wrap. Today we're checking out the LG G8 in mid 2020 to see if it's great. I want to start by saying this phone is a cutie, an all glass black candy bar beauty. But with all that glass comes a slipperiness, like I've literally watched this phone slide right off my desk. I recommend buying a case for a skin or you'll likely see your phone taking it on the chin. Moving on to what the phone has under the hood, Snapdragon 855 with 6 gigs of RAM, that's good. 128 gigs of storage with micro SD, POLED screen that can run at 1440p, plus a 3500 milliamp hour battery. Wireless charging and a headphone jack, two capable cameras with no bump on the back. IP68 water resistance is really cool, which means it'll survive a drop in the pool. It's upgradable to Android 10, and I actually really like the LG skin. Not very intrusive and packs some cool things, always on display and built-in screen recording. Dark mode, which is my favorite theme, it's really great for that POLED screen.